I hope that you, who are independents and Democrats, will let me talk to you also tonight because the problems facing our country are problems that just don't bear any party label. You can't get things done when all you're doing is yelling and screaming at people and dividing people. I'm a lifelong Republican, but that attachment holds second place to my responsibility to my country. Country, party, and where is the GOP headed? We are joined now for this special discussion by John Kasich, the former Republican congressman, governor of Ohio, and 2016 presidential candidate who recently joined us as an MSNBC contributor. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm so excited to be here with you. What does the Republican Party stand for today? I think it's dominated by fear, Ari, to tell you the truth. I think that there are too many Republican faithful who are worried about the demographic change in our country, some of the cultural changes that are happening. They're worried about what happens with the border, who's coming in. It's really interesting hearing you say that there's someone who agrees with you. Uh, this is a little Today Show clip. Take a look. If you were to describe the Republican Party as you see it today, yeah. how would you describe it? Uh, I would describe it as isolationist, protectionist, and to a certain extent, nativist. What really troubling is how much misinformation there is and the yeah. capacity of people to uh, spread all kinds of untruth. Yeah, well, are this, when you have this fear, then it's hard for anybody to communicate positive things. Mm -hmm. The real key to the party is when they start to embrace change. Take the Democrats, they kind of like change. And when they got a chance to go and do things differently, the Republicans right now are frozen and they're trapped by what I call orthodoxy, which is, well, if I say that, then I'll be ridden out or something. You did stand up as a conservative in a state that I would say is conservative or center right or has gone red, whatever you want to call it in Ohio. And you said back then, not now, it's easier for people out of office. Then in 2013, you said, there's a conservative way to channel funds to get more people health coverage in what was still a private market system. Let's take a look. This is Ohio. This is a great industrial, big size, big time state. We will make this work. And we're not gonna ignore people who live in the shadows. It is not right. The stronger we are, the more we can do to lift everybody. And that's our purpose. That's my purpose. And so the Medicaid expansion is a tough issue, but let us not turn this money down. Has that aged well? Yeah, because more and more states are buying into it. North Carolina's just, I, in fact, I went down and testified virtually to, to why Medicaid expansion would work. And, you know, I, I said to them down there, you know, when, to these Republicans, I said, when you die and go to heaven, St. Peter's not going to ask you, did you balance the budget? He's going to ask you, what'd you do for the least of those? Uh, I want to play for you a little bit of Ted Cruz. You remember him. You ran against him for president. I do remember him. Um, saying, I don't know if it's true, but saying that he wants a conservatism, a Republican Party that, that represents the worker. Take a look. I think one of the most consequential political shifts of the last decade is that Republicans have become a blue collar party. We are the party of working men and women. We are the party of truck drivers and steel workers, and we are the party of the railroad union workers. Union membership has declined, uh, and you see yeah. that middle class share of income has gone with it. You can have the larger debate. Um, in your own state of Ohio, you were not always seen as super pro union. We're not here to relitigate everything, but I guess the question is one, is there a place for unions in the Republican Party? And if not, what does it mean to be blue collar? Sure. You, you were about to sure. quibble with him. I give you the floor. It's all about giving people an opportunity. Called it, you know, what some people used to refer to as an opportunity society. Now, let me talk a little bit about Ohio because we think it's so solidly red. I don't necessarily buy that. Uh, and I'll tell you why. That negative populism, the fact that everybody's against me, the elites hate me and everything else, it only works so long, that rhetoric, until people say, well, wait a minute, what are you going to do to help me? Places like Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, Youngstown, they're, they're voting red right now. Let me tell you, if you're Republicans, don't count on it. I'm excited about new ways of thinking. I'm excited about AI. I'm excited about all this stuff, about what we can do with personalized medicine. I mean, grab it. That's yeah. what Republicans well, are hey, doing. They're like, they're like curling up like this. Oh, my God, there's somebody coming over the border. I mean, come on, yeah. wake up. But you hey, see, that's like that it. negative 
populism that says you're losing because somebody else took yeah. it from you. Well, shout, shout out, shout out to the future. As we wrap the special conversation here, I have two is questions. Is this it? This is all we're doing. This is all we're doing. We're just, we got a whole I, special I, set. I, we got you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, no, I can take a hard time. I got the last two questions for you. Yeah. What do people need to understand about American conservatisms, about American conservatives? Uh, that they may misunderstand or oversimplify. We're here listening and learning, and you've been in this. Uh, that's part one. And part two, uh, what does the Republican Party need to change most in your view? So what's misunderstood and change? And then, yes, we will be done. Well, what's, what is misunderstood among legitimate conservatives is we love and care about people, and we want them to have a better life. And what do you most want to see change in this GOP? Well, beyond, it, it's the whole, it's the whole, the whole attacking of woke and all these other things and forgetting these issues. It's using, it's using issues that can divide our people as opposed to ideas that advance our society and advance people. That's what I like to change. And the negative populism. Listen, we got problems. That blue collar workers got problems, okay? Let's sit down with that worker and say, what do you need to get better? And we're gonna help you. I appreciate that, uh, Congressman, Governor, also analyst John Kasich. Thank All you. All right. Sir. Thanks, Ari. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much.